Hi, Jada here. Um, as you can tell, I've got some pieces of art that I plan to resin. I've got it all set up for us. I decided to just go live with this because I probably won't get a video up this week. Um, I have a lot of editing to do on one project that I'm going to work on, and so I thought today I wanted to get something up because it's Sunday and be consistent. And so I'm going to resin all of these. Now, it looks like a lot of things at first, but once we get pouring, I think it will be okay. I have confidence. So I'm all set up. I have everything handy that I need. I have my cups um, and I've already marked them. This is going to be my mixing cup. This is going to be my resin cup. I marked it with an R and I've marked the H hardener. Um, I've marked where I'm going to pour my resin to. I have a pretty good idea what how much resin I'm going to need. And so let's just begin. Um, first thing I just wanted to go through with, we always want to make sure that everything is even and as much balanced as possible because you don't want your resin to tip off of the sides. Now all of this is pre-taped. I put washi tape on, then I've used the painter's tape and everything is sealed with two or three coats of UV protectant and then the Caramar spray which uh, fixes the alcohol ink so that it will not bleed um, because and some of these, there's quite a lot of different colors and I don't want the purple to bleed into the yellow and etc. So there's that. Um, let's just, let's just get started. I have my H cup and I have my hardener. I'm going to measure out what I need and I'm going to put it on the table so that I can see. when it gets to the line. And we're gonna go with that. I like to take the back of my lid, wipe the edge, and then put that cap back in so that I know the hardener lid is going on to the hardener bottle. And then the same with the resin. So bring my R over. Pour that to the line. bit and put the lid on it. I have a little bit of paper towel here with a bit of rubbing alcohol sprayed on it so I can wipe my gloves. It completely gets rid of the residue from resin. I just want to give the bottles a quick wipe. There's nothing worse than a really sticky resin bottle. And the resin that I use is actually art resin. Now what I have to do is take the hardener and the resin and I'm going to pour them both into this M cup or mix cup. And I have a popsicle stick handy. So making sure there's nothing in the cup. Give it a tip. You could pour them in at exactly the same time, but I like to make sure that I get all of the resin out of the bottom of the cup. It's a bit thicker than the hardener. Is it? One of them is thicker than the other. It might be them. It might be the hardener that's thicker than the resin. We'll find out here right away. I can't remember. So I'm going to scrape the bottom of my resin cup and let that drip off and just to make sure I get it all, as much of it out as I can. There we go. Let's run that on the side. There we go. That one can go over there. And then the hardener. 
yeah, the resin. I feel like the resin is, I don't know, maybe they're about the same. So I'm not going to reuse these cups, so I can scrape the bottom of the cup with the popsicle stick that also had the resin on it, because I'm going to stir them all together anyways. I don't know, maybe that hardener is thicker than the resin. It's pretty close. Give it a scrape. Yeah, no, I'd say that that hardener is definitely thinner. And now we stir. So I'm watching my clock. And we're at six minutes, almost. So we have to stir this product for three minutes. Unfortunately, with a live video, I cannot speed lapse through this. You want to make sure you're always scraping your sides and the bottom of the cup. Make sure there's nothing stuck to the bottom. I finished filming a project earlier today and now I just need to get a lot of it edited. But I thought before I go upstairs and do that, I'd like to finish up a lot of the things that I've started. And I thought, well, why not just record it right on YouTube? So that's what I did. We're at seven minutes. We've got two minutes left. Yeah, so what can I tell you about my setup? I have cups set around the corners of my... Um, pouring area right here there's four of them and I have a canvas on standby that I'm going to use to cover this so that it's not you know dust can drop into them I anticipate though that I'm probably gonna have to do a second pour on mm, 50 or more percent of these items so I'm not a, I'm not terribly worried if I get a little bit of dust on them it's the finish pour that I'm really worried about it being perfect. I got really lucky today with the pours that I did earlier and they are so good. They are so perfect. I am not going to have to re-pour uh, any of it. There's one thing that I will re-pour but I don't actually, I don't think I would even have to. I'm probably the only person in the world that would notice the thing that I noticed, but it does have a bit of a wobble in it, probably from over torching. So I'm going to re-pour one of the items. Okay, so we're at eight and a half. I feel pretty good about this. So I'm going to get started. I am going to start at the one the furthest away from me. And I'm just going to do a little pool, just a little, like it looks like it will spread to the edges. Wait a second, little buddy. Oh. There you go. Oh, that's enough. In fact, I wouldn't even call that too much. Just going to take a little bit. There we go. And go over here now. I'm just going to set a little bit more on this one. And then I'm going to stop for a minute. I'm going to just spread these out. These particular pieces um, with the multiple levels and multiple pieces of yuppo paper they are going, they're two pages deep, so they're definitely going to need a second coat. I do not suspect that I can get away with one pour, so I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to get it on there as quick as I can and spread it to the corners and then call it done. And 
before we finish today, I'll take the camera close up and I'll show you the different levels and why I know I'm going to have to do this twice. Oh, now that turned out a lot nicer than I thought it would. That was great. Okay, and then this one. Resin makes everything beautiful. Like, I just feel like you could resin broccoli and it would be beautiful. Like, it doesn't matter what it is, resin just makes it so shiny. It brings out all the colors. It's just a beautiful product. I just love it. And I like art resin specifically. I worked with another resin. It wasn't an art resin. It was just a regular, like, do your bar top or your tabletop kind of resin. And it will not be as clear. There's a lot of different things that go wrong with just resin like that. There was, I don't know, I could smack talk another product, but I just really happen to love art resin. So I'm just going to keep using it. gonna drip it might as well drip on a piece whoops it's a bit tight in here I was hoping to get everything on camera though and also fit everything underneath my canvas that I'm gonna use as my dust shield let's see can we get more Yep, dup on dup, dup. Oh my gosh. Drip on the piece. That way I'm not wasting even a drop. Just want to make sure that it gets right to the edges. I don't know, sometimes I feel like every single thing needs a second pour. That's just my, that's just my thoughts. That's not anybody else's. But I say that because the dome effect that happens with two pours, it just is so pretty. I'll go down the center of this two times. And I don't actually think I'm going to do this last piece because I might not have enough. I just want to see, a I might just mix up another cup and I w wanted to make sure I didn't over produce. I didn't want to make too much resin and then have extra. I'd much rather just make a little bit more later and do it again. Wow, that yellow really pops underneath this. Yep, decision made. I'm going to use up what's, rest in, what's in this cup on all of these that I've already done. And then I'm going to make up a new batch for this last little thing I want to do. There we go getting it to go right up to the corners, right up to the very edge. You know, I might have enough. Gosh, I'm, I'm torn. If you don't know me yet, and this is the first time you've ever watched one of my videos, you might as well know right now, I change my mind a lot. My son called, says I should have a tattoo of a flip-flop shoe because I'm always changing my mind. He calls me a flip-flop. He loves me. Okay, I'm just taking a look at it from the side, make sure I haven't missed any edges. Really want to get it right up to the sides. Whoops, that was a bit of an overrun. And 
checking this side. And it will continue to level if it isn't already. Okay. I know this is really boring. I'm just like, I feel bad for you for watching. But resin can be, I mean, it's persnickety. You have to take the time. And why produce a video if you don't understand and you want to know how to do something? If you're not going to actually see what's happening. So, I'm going to put that cup to the side. Essential. You must have a little, a little torch. We're going to push. We're going to pop all the bubbles. You gotta get them all, and some new ones might pop up. So we'll go back over it one more time. Another thing I love about art resin is that it is no VOC. It is really, it can be done in the house. There's absolutely no odor. There's no off gassing or anything like that. So it's absolutely safe to do in your home. It's probably safer for you than rubbing alcohol itself if that's your art, if that's your thing that you use. Oh, they are just just about perfect. Oh, so good. This one has a little bit of a, a little dip maybe right here. Give it another drop. And then this one too. Just where those extra papers. Where those papers are a little higher. Oh, sick. And you know what? I'm just going to go for it. It's a narrow little thing. I feel like I, I can scrape the bottom of this. I'm not going to scrape all the way around the sides. Just I'm just helping the resin come down. And that's it. No scraping. Don't scrape it. You might get some resin and hardener that have not mixed together properly and you do not want your resin to be gummy if your resin isn't mixed properly you can get some gumminess you can get parts of the product or the project that do not um that don't harden at all they're always like chewy gummy and you'll have to like pick all of that off or sand it all off and it is a nightmare so you don't want to do that and ruin a project that you just love because you didn't mix it properly. It can be salvaged. I mean, there are ways to fix it. And if you go to artresin.com, I think it's a .com, they have, or on their Instagram, or on their, sorry, on their um, YouTube, they have a whole series of videos on how to fix resin problems. They call it, they call it the oh bleep because, oh bleep, I messed up my project. And this is how uh, you fix it. So you can always check out artresin.com or artresin on Instagram or Facebook. They're everywhere. And they explain so, so much that I'm not even going to attempt. You guys can go and take a peek. But if you want to watch somebody do it so you have an idea how it goes, Anybody can do this. I can do this. If I can do this, anybody can do this. I am not like, you know, so freaking, I mean, I'm pretty smart, yes, but I mean, anybody can do this. It's really not that intimidating. Look how many pieces I have here. Now, granted, this is the first pour. I wouldn't do 
this many pieces if it was my finishing pour because I would want to make sure that each piece was perfect. Um, but if I get lucky and some of these are perfect, then bonus for me. I had just enough resin. I am so happy with myself. Like, I got this covered, and because there's so many pieces, I already know, like a hundred times I've said it, I'm going to have to re-pour this anyways, but, oh, it's really awesome that I got exactly the right amount. Okay, so I've let some bubbles rise. I'm just going to put that stick there. I'm going to torch this. One more time, I see one bubble there that popped up. And I see a couple more here that popped up. I see a couple here. Just to be sure. And then this last one. So we want a minute 21, 21 minutes from beginning to end. I mean, I did pre-prep quite a few things. That's not too bad. I'm pretty pleased. Okay, just looking at it from the side to be sure that there's nothing. And check this out. Well done. And now we're just going to take this canvas. I should probably put you down. Let me just put you back down. Oop, a little crooked. And I'm going to cover it. And that stays for 24 hours. You can come back in about 18, peel off the tapes, but being very careful not to touch the surface too, too much because it will still be soft. I like to leave my resin for at least 72 hours before I put anything heavy on it or if, I, if I'm scraping anything off of it, I really want to make sure that it's fully, fully cured for the final pour. Now I probably will have to re-pour all of these or most of them, um, but that's okay. This is the first pour. Um, hopefully I might get really lucky with some of them and not have to second pour. But there you go, that's the process. That's beginning to end. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did enjoy it, please don't be afraid to share, share it. Don't be afraid to hit the subscribe button, then hit the bell, and every time I put up a new video, every time I do a project, I pretty much videotape it. And then I just place it on YouTube, and if you like it, you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. Give me a comment, tell me why you hated it. I'll maybe, I'll try and change it. If you have a suggestion for something you want me to try also, I'm willing to, you know, I'm open to that. So anyways, you guys have a great day. I hope you enjoyed this. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a subscribe. Find me on Instagram. I'm JD's Creative. See you later.